morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, and I just want to join you for a few minutes. This is coffee with Chandra. I already drank my coffee, so it's gone. And I'm coming out of the heartland. Just wanted to join you for a little bit this morning. It is harvest time here in Iowa, and see evidence of that all over the place. We see the big farm machinery, um, the cornfields, which are now kind of dried out and waiting to be harvested. So I've been talking about some points about harvest, <laughs> harvesting that relate to our lives and sometimes to business. So this is our seventh in the series. And it's just keeping in mind that you can't do anything about last year's harvest. You can only do something about this year's. Can't do something about last year's harvest. You can only do something about this year's. And that is so true. <laughs> I mean, this is so obvious, but um, life is full of consequences, whether that be good or bad. And life is just made up of a ton of small choices. Some of them might have huge um, far-reaching effects and they, they have more meaning and impact than we think. Sometimes we get in the habit of just doing the same things every day and going through our daily routine and changing some of those habits might have a huge impact to your life. So how we get to our goals, it's just all of the consequences of those small actions that we take every day. Earlier this week, I talked about failing and encouraged you to fail, and I sure do fail every day, depending on what it is. Sometimes more than one time at the same thing, but... I think if we just fail and fail and fail at the same thing over and over, that's really not the point of it. We have to, we do have to take risks and then we'll fail at those things because they're new, new to us, but we have to learn from those and we have to stop continuing making the same mistake. To reach our goals, we have to move on from the failures. We have to make new ones. We have to make new failures all the time. Just don't get stuck in that rut of staying in the same failure. So I continue to encourage, I can't speak, encourage you to fail, but fail at new things. So there are kind of four things that are in this little chat I have this morning about, you know, looking forward to just this year's harvest because you can't do anything about what happened in the past. And the first is just simply we cannot do anything about last year's harvest. It's done, over with. So don't have yourself a pity party if it went really badly. Sometimes it does. Sometimes you did something you're like, that was so stupid. And you know what? Forgive yourself and move on. Because it is doing no one any good to focus on that and stay in that old... It, it's not even happening now. You're not even in the present, you're in the past. And there is only the present. Present. No woe is me. We're not we're not staying there, so no pity parties. We can have other kind of parties, just not pity parties. Um so in knowing that we can't change the past, we can find out what opportunities are available from maybe what happened. What can I learn from? Did it open the door to meeting some new people or a new business opportunity or just learning something new about yourself? So think about what opportunities that opened up rather than, oh, I did such a bad job. Because that's not doing anyone any good. And I love this quote. Sometimes by losing a battle, find out how to win the war. 
it is great. Think about all of, I mean, especially like I think of the Civil War era, and I'm not naming any battles because I'm not a huge history buff. <laughs> My dad could have told you anything about the Civil War you wanted to know. I mean, I know like concepts, ideas. I'm not going to name battles. But there are a lot of battles that were lost, and we know who ultimately won the war. So just in any anything that's trying to move forward, and in the Civil War, that was certainly the, the ideal. They're trying to move forward and improve. And sometimes you lose the battle so you can discover how to win the war. I changed the quote a little bit there because I like that better. But just in keeping that in mind, that's a, that's a really cool way of looking at it, I think. It's okay to fail, but take the lessons and win, the, win your goal with that. So number two, we must learn to live with the consequences of our failures. I said to fail, I said there, I didn't say there would not be consequences to failing. There always are. So we have to learn how to deal with those. First of all, we have to learn to be okay with the fact that we failed. Because the, the process is learn, do, fail. Learn, do, fail, learn, do, fail, and hopefully we fail a little less and less. But we're going to fail. And just by having that in your mind, it makes you beat yourself up less about it. Learning from failures can be the back door to success. And we talked about that in that last quote about losing the battle, winning the war. That failure can be maybe your biggest asset. Let's say, I'm going to see if I can give an analogy for that. Let's say somebody makes fun of you that you're geeky and dorky and whatever growing up. And you think that that is a failure of your character. That's a bad thing. Oh, nobody likes me because I'm such a geek and a nerd. And you have some really cool ideas, and but you're a little more eccentric maybe. Say that that happened when you're growing up. Well, as you become an adult and you come into your own, that can be one of your biggest assets. That can drive who, what, what you want to do for a job, who your friends are, who your spouse might be. So embrace your nerdiness, embrace your geekiness, because that's an awesome part of who you are. And probably makes you a million times more interesting than anybody that made fun of you. So, your failure might be that back door to success. Um, the consequences to our failures might also be that you're building character and skills. You think, oh, I didn't do so hot at that when I was trying it this way. Well, I'm going to try it a different way. There are millions of different ways of doing something. Anybody that is good at their computer at all knows that to do one command, there are like five ways you can do it. It's just built in that way. So there's never only one way. So just, you know, think of your character building and what other skills you may gain. And I read a quote by Thomas Edison. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and he said, there, he said, I did not fail. I just figured out 10,000 ways it wouldn't work. So, number three, we must, <coughs> we must commit ourselves to this year's harvest. We must commit ourselves to this year's harvest. Two interesting words in there. We, like, we must do it ourselves. That is a decision each of us makes. It can't be made by someone else. And commit, just that word in and of itself, it doesn't give you room to fail. You're committing to do it. 
you're putting forth all your effort and resources to do that thing that you decided to do. In committing to this year's harvest, that is no guarantee that you're going to produce. No guarantee that you're going to produce. You know, even if you're trying your hardest, you might have something not quite right, or you might have a flood that impacts your crops, or you might be taken over by some new species of pest that eats all your crops. And there are going to be setbacks, but that doesn't mean it's not worth trying. So you might not produce, even though you commit yourself to that harvest. It will come eventually. It definitely won't if you don't put forth the effort. If the effort's not there, you definitely will not produce a single thing. Things don't just happen in life, unless we talked about the other day, apathy will happen. I don't, that's not good enough for me. Committing yourself to this year's harvest means you would need to grow. In the terms of maturity, you need to grow out of babyhood stage. You need to not only grow from milk, you need to start adding solids into your, into your vocabulary, into your diet. What does that mean? Don't just take the most basic thing and stay with that. You need to grow. And by doing that, you know, when babies first eat, they have formula or mother's milk or something like that that's really easily digestible. Really easily digestible. And that's perfect for them at that age. They need those particular things to grow vitamins and minerals and that easily digestible food because they don't have the system to to really digest anything more complex than that. And then as they grow a little bit more, need more fuel for their bodies, can add in still easily digest digestible but add in some other foods other fruits and vegetables pureed because they don't have the capability of chewing they have no teeth so they have to still have something soft and easily digestible pretty soon those little teeth start growing in it's painful but it's an important part of life and they need something that they can chew on a little bit little tiny tiny pieces they can't take they can't eat a whole, they can't eat a steak. <laughs> so they need that cut up for them. Tiny little pieces. Pretty soon they can get a little bit bigger pieces, a little more complex foods. Um, and as an adult, we can eat those, we can eat steak or chicken or corn on the cob or things like that that you might need your teeth for, you need a good digestive system, things like that. So you're going to need to grow out of being a baby into maturity. Go from the milk to the meat. Dive in a little deeper. The more you learn about something and actually teaching it makes you learn a whole lot faster and a whole lot more. <clears throat> So do those things, even if even if you're fake teaching, even if you figure out a lesson to do and you're not actually teaching it to someone, maybe you just record yourself doing it. Well, I'm going to pass here. <laughs> well, you're still growing because you learned all those things. And pretty soon you will be confident enough to stand up in front of people because you know it. It's in your mind. I think that's awesome when people take that next step to that leadership. But you have to mature. I was watching Facebook, or I was on Facebook the other day, and a friend of mine who I've been saying, 
just do your Facebook Live. Just do it. Just do it. And I've been pushing her a little bit. <laughs> she did her first one yesterday. And it was really great. She had some really good comments about it. That, that she inspired other people. And that she, was, she spoke really well. And she actually speaks in front of people quite a lot. So it wasn't... I don't think it was a too far of a reach. But the whole being live can be intimidating for sure. So that is really awesome. I won't say who it was. But she did a great job yesterday. And good job. So... Again, it's just committing yourself to this year's harvest. Committing yourself to that new thing that you aren't comfortable doing yet. And then four, we must not judge our harvest by the standards of others and their idea of success. Amen. <laughs> there, you know, everybody has their own idea of success. It isn't just, well, I want to become a millionaire. Somebody might want to become a millionaire. Another person might want to start an orphanage in Africa. Another may want to work toward staying home with their family and working from home. Another person might have a goal to be a mission worker, you know, traveling around and helping those, like, right now there's a lot of need in Haiti because of the hurricane that just passed through. You can go help physically build things or, you know, there are so many needs in the world. What your idea of success might be could be worlds away from the person sitting next to you. Another one might be becoming a world-class athlete. That is something you certainly need to commit to because you have a whole mindset happening there that really is so important to that any performer, if you're performing an instrument, you know, all of these things are a goal that you might personally have, and if you, on your travel, on your journey to that, that is where you're finding success, not Joe sitting next to you, he has a different, for, a different um, definition of success. And at the end of the day, perfectionism is not Im as important as results. You can't get stuck in doing everything perfect, 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 because you will not move forward. You need to move forward, and that will, here's going crazy, that will propel you to the next level. You won't stay in that milk level forever. You're going to go through, you know, finding some, some more solid foods, and going to start gaining results, but don't stay in that land of perfectionism. It's so easy to do. I am a complete perfectionist. But sometimes you just have to say, you know what? That's really great. What I did is really great, and I'm just going to move on, move on from it. Um, so perfectionism is not as important as results. And this last one, this is an interesting, I hadn't thought about this perspective, but do we think we're a success and are sadly mistaken? <laughs> this is where we become a little more introspective. Hmm. Am I a success even to my own definition? Or am I just pretending I am, I don't know, are you a poser? You know, think about, think about that. It's not that you're fooling other people. Are you trying to fool yourself? So know if we're on the right track to becoming that success according to our own definition. And it probably will change as you go through your journey. I mean, that's part of it. You, you adjust and adjust and adjust. And I love the story, or the analogy is not a story, but um, the rocket is, you know, any rocket that goes up into space, they don't just choose a trajectory and just go with that. There are so many variables 
that I wouldn't even know what all to go into, you know, but it, wind and the atmosphere and, you know, the fact everything's moving, you don't just choose your trajectory, you continually change and compensate for, oh, you know what, I need to go 15 more degrees this way. You have to keep compensating, changing according to where that end goal is, and if it's landing, like, for instance, on the moon, keep changing that so you actually land on the moon if you get off course a little bit. Because that'll happen. That's okay. That's called failure. But failure that provides learning, so that's a good thing. <clears throat> but the, at the end of all of the journey, you know, you just have to look. And every journey, you know, we constantly have more than one in life. It's not like we just have one that we're focusing on. But you think, you look back, did I fight the fight that was, that I, you know, did I try my hardest? If I was in a race, did I finish that race? Did I keep going or, you know, I was part way in and I stopped. I just thought, oh, I'm too tired. I don't like to sweat. I'm going to stop. Did you finish the race? Because at the end of the day, you have to have the faith that you can do it. You have to have the faith that you can do it and that follow through. If you don't have that in your mind, it mean, it's all over. So it requires us to keep that faith in the end result. Keep your faith and the momentum moving in that direction. I looked up a quote, it was by Henry David Thoreau, great American writer, and this is really, this is really the, the thing, this is the thing, what you get by achieving your goals is not as important as who you become by achieving your goals, I think that is awesome. Who are you becoming? Are you improving? Are you getting better? Are you becoming a better version of you? That is the thing. So with that, I'm going to let you all have an awesome Sunday. Hopefully it's as beautiful as wherever all of you are as it is here. It's gorgeous fall day. Gorgeous. So if you liked this, you can like it or comment or share. Appreciate everyone that comments and just, I hope I touch someone in um, recording these. And again, back to this, we can't do anything about last year's harvest, but we can about this year's. So go out there and do something about this year's harvest. Think about the things you can do. It can start with a list. To go out and change your whole world, but do something. Uh, this is Chandra, and I will catch you on the next video.